Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see a few more examples on time complexity. So in our previous session, we have seen a few examples. So how to calculate the time complexity and today also we'll see a few examples. And before going to the examples, let us recall the procedure. So first of all, we have to consider an algorithm or a pseudocode and find out all the blocks how many blocks the net number of blocks available in that particular code and once you find out that blocks and find out the time complexity for each and every block and then add time complexity of every block and then you will be getting one equation and from that equation you have to consider only the highest degree based upon the growth rate right so by following the same procedure we have seen a few examples in our previous session and today we are going to see a few more examples. Yes. See. So the session will be again on time complexities. Time complexity. So let us take one code for i is equal to 1, i less than or equal to n, i plus plus for j is equal to 1 j less than or equal to i j plus plus and let it be any any sort of statements here so you you can see here there is a dependency okay so how many times this will be repeated how many times this will be repeated so forget about this one outer loop how many times the outer loop is repeated obviously it will be repeated for n times Obviously, it will be repeated for n times, right? Because i is equal to 1 and 1 to n. Yes. Coming to the inner loop, how many times it will be repeated? So, that depends upon i value. So, that depends upon i value. So, in such case, we have to trace for a few iterations so that we can get an idea how many times it will be iterated. Now, let us trace the problem. So, when i is equal to 1, i is equal to 1, how many times j will be repeated? So j is equal to 1. So j will be repeated with I write here. So j will be repeated one time. When i is equal to 2, that means second iteration, i is equal to 2, j will be repeated. You can see j less than or equal to 2, that means 1 and 2, 2 times. When i is equal to 3, when i is equal to 3, then j will be repeated. So, 3, 1, 2 and 3, 3 times. Okay. So, you can say it here, how many times it will be repeated? 1 time plus 2 times plus 3 times plus and so on. Okay. How many times? 1 plus, 1 time, 2 time, 3 time, 4 time. You can observe. 1, 2, 3, and again, if you trace the, uh, for i is equal to 4, it will, j will be repeated for 4 times. 4 times. So, this is nothing but our sum of n natural numbers. Sum of n natural numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on. So, obviously, this will be repeated with n into n plus 1 divided by 2 times. So, that will be n square plus n divided by 2. So, obviously, what happens? This will be removed. The highest order will be n square. n square. So, like this, we have to trace the problem if there is any dependency. If there is no dependency, obviously, we can directly go with that. If there is a de dependency, we have to trace it and we have to find out how many times the loop will be iterated. So you can observe here. So we'll go with a few more examples. Few more examples. Now, let us check with the one more example. See. I is equal to 1 i less than or equal to n by 2 i plus plus 
for j is equal to 1 j less than or equal to n by 4 j plus plus so if you consider this type of code so this how many times it will be repeated obviously there is no dependency so i iterating from 1 to n by 2 j is iterating from 1 to n by 4 so there is no dependency so if there is no dependency we can simply multiply both the things so this will be n by 2 times and this will be n by 4 times and what we have to do we have to multiply so order of n by 2 into n by 4 so that will be the order of this particular problem okay so hope you understood if there is a dependency so we should not multiply but we have to trace the problem we have to find out few iterations and we have we can find the number of uh, i mean number of times the the loop will be iterating right so just like in our previous example so here there is no dependency so obviously we can find out the time complexity of each and every loop and we can multiply so in our previous example we are not multiplying that one right so because there is a dependency so we should not multiply okay so hope you understood so if coming to the loops nested loops there are two things one is dependency and no dependency so if there is a dependency trace and find and if there is no dependency multiply time complexity of each block or each loop okay right so here there is no dependency we are just multiplying so we will see a few more examples with similar so here i have taken two examples so we will see the time complexity for these two examples so in the for loop we have taken the two initializations here one condition and two updations right so let us trace and find out so here in this case okay so when i is equal to n then j will be 0 and condition n greater than 0 and the updation will be the next okay here i write j is equal to 0 and j will become 1 j becomes 1 and i becomes n by 2 so n by 2 greater than 0 so observe next i value will become n by 4 so n by 4 greater than 0 next i value n by 8 okay n by 8 greater than 0 so for every iteration n will be reducing to half n will be reducing to half so what we can say n by 2 power k greater than or equal to 0 okay greater than or equal to 0 so this we can simply write it as n is equal to 2 power k okay which we can call it as k is equal to log n base 2 so already we have discussed it the same situation we got it right so the same the time complexity of this one will be time complexity will be order of log n base 2 okay so like that we can trace it and we can find out the number of iterations that happens here okay hope you understood this one so n and every time so the comparison is on i i greater than 0 okay so i value is keep on reducing to half so by studying about the time complexity different time complexities we have studied the log n that means if the search space or the space is reduced gradually to half for every iteration that will be the logarithmic so that will be the log n base 2 the order of log n right and coming to this example let us take the same let us follow the same thing 
so here i is equal to 0 and j is equal to n and see n greater than 0 n greater than 0 true again i becomes half so i by 2 j becomes 1 so j becomes n plus 1 so n plus 1 greater than 0 and i becomes i by 4 and you can eliminate i because we are comparing the condition we have to so when the loop will be terminated that depends upon the condition so we have to consider the condition so here the condition the variable is j so focus on the j and in the above example you can see the condition the variable will be on i right so we have to focus on i so you need not bother about j whether it is incremented or decremented so because whenever the i value becomes greater than 0 then only it will be iterating whenever the i value becomes less than 0 immediately it will be terminated and i value will be decrementing with a half for every iteration so similarly here also we are taking two variables and one variable is decrementing by half and one variable is incrementing and we are using only one variable in the condition right so we have to focus on the condition because based upon the condition only the loop will be terminated so in the condition we are using j so focus on j not on i so j is equal to n plus 1 n plus 1 greater than 0 so n plus 2 greater than 0 j is equal to n plus 2 n plus 3 greater than 0 so j is equal to n plus 3 and so on so what happens always the j value will be keep on incrementing and always the j the the n value will be greater than 0 right so the loop will not be terminated so this will be the infinite loop infinite loop so if it is an infinite loop the time complexity is undetermined the time complexity of any infinite loop will be undetermined so we can't determine right so we can't uh, assume or we can we can calculate the time complexity because this is an infinite loop okay so simply iterate a few steps and you can easily guess the number of iterations it will apply or it will follow okay so we'll see a few more examples so let us take uh, one more example and here also we are having a two for loops nested loop so first we have to so if it is a nested loop as we have discussed just now so first we have to think about the dependency whether there is a, any dependency to iterating iterating the inner loop so you can see uh, the inner loop j will be varying from 1 to n and uh, outer loop i is varying from 1 to n so there is no dependency so we can calculate the time complexity of the inner loop and we can multiply it with the time complexity of the outer loop so what is the time complexity of the outer loop so in our previous sessions we can see the similarity right so the time complexity is log n so if anyone missed about the previous session so that will be available in the description playlist so you can go through and and you can uh, easily understand how we are getting the log n base 2 and in this session itself we have taken this example and uh, this came it as a n by 2 okay so that means we can avoid the constant so n so the time complexity of this one the time complexity of this type of algorithm will be order of multiply both one n log n base 2 so this will be the time complexity okay this is one example so let us see the last example see let us see this example i is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 and we have initialized two variables we are checking the condition k less than or equal to n and we are uh, iterating the two statements here and see here the condition depends upon the k value and k value depends upon the i value so there is a dependency hope you understood so here the condition is k and n so k value depends upon i, I because we are updating the k with i value right 
so i value is will be keep on incrementing now we have to find out the time complexity trace here so when i is equal to 1 when i is equal to 1 then k will also be 1 and so 1 less than or equal to n then i becomes 2 and k becomes 3 so 3 less than or equal to n again i is equal to 3 okay now k is equal to k plus i what is a key 3 i is 3 6 6 less than or equal to n next i is equal to 4 and k will be k plus i k is 6 and i is 4 10 so 10 less than or equal to n and so on so you can trace it how we are getting this one so you can see for i is equal to 1 okay so 1 i is equal to 2 it is 3 i is equal to 3 it becomes 6 and i is equal to 4 it becomes 10 that implies sum of all the previous numbers you can see when i is equal to 2 2 plus 1 3 i is equal to 3 3 plus 2 plus 1 6 you can observe here so i so that will be only 1 and here 2 plus 1 and here 3 plus 2 plus 1 and here 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 you can observe so 4 3 2 1 so i values will be keep on adding so that means sum of n natural numbers so this can be written as this can be written as i into i plus 1 divided by 2 less than or equal to n okay so you can simply write it because this is nothing but sum of n natural numbers so avoid the constants so you can avoid the constants so the, it becomes i square plus i less than or equal to n i square plus i less than or equal to n so simply you can consider the highest grade so i square is equal to n and i becomes root n so that implies the complexity of this one the time complexity of this particular code will be order of root n order of root n right so like this we have to trace and we have to find out how we are getting the condition and from that we can get the time complexity right so hope you understood this one so previous examples in our previous session we have seen all the simple examples and in today's session we have gone with a, a few complex examples so with this you might be knowing how to calculate the time complexities and definitely by practicing more problems you will be getting strong with calculating the time complexity of any kind of algorithm or any kind of pseudo code right so let's stop here hope you understood this one and if you are having any queries regarding these procedures feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.